Pat Love back with Pat's Two Cents, and James is here with me. The book of James, we are going down to verses 5, 6, 7, and 8. He's teaching us how to do this walk thing with God. <clears throat> All right. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Now, Pat's two cents. I got to interject here because I didn't even know what it meant when I first read it. <clears throat> but some of you may not know what that means. When it says upbraideth not, <clears throat> this is what some people do. They'll say, oh, well, what does that word mean? Well, you mean you don't know what that word means? What's the matter with you? Why don't you get a dictionary? What, you stupid or something? You been you such and such a years old and you don't know that? What's wrong with you? You mean all this time you never did get that? All these years you never have attained to that? Oh, come on. You got to be kidding me. What's wrong with you? Well, <clears throat> that's what God does not do. So when we ask him for wisdom, he's like, sure, here you go. Get all you want. He doesn't criticize us for not having wisdom. He doesn't criticize us for being underdeveloped in areas. He brings it to our attention so that we can in turn ask him to help us. And then he rolls up his sleeves and he's ready to go. Now, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. And it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, not wavering. For he that wavereth is like the, a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now, <clears throat> many of us are living beneath our privilege psychologically emotionally financially uh physical whatever circumstantially because there are things in our lives that have not been developed to the point where it should be so we live in an area of deficit we live in lack i'm not talking about financial lack i'm talking about lack of self-control lack of peace lack of understanding lack of insight lack of sensitivity to others we lack things we even lack the desire to do right at times so because of our flesh and that's why we need God the power of his Holy Spirit to change our nature change our flesh now when you know you have those areas where you lack, you don't brush it under the carpet so nobody will see. You go to God and you ask him to work on you. You humble yourself. You acknowledge the fact that you are flawed, that you are imperfect, that you have needs that only a God can need. That you need adjustments, you need an overhaul. Okay, now, when you go to God with that, he's not gonna get on your case because you have needs. It's gonna tickle him pink to know that you had enough sense to go to him who has all the help we need. <clears throat> now, excuse me. When you ask God, you don't ask and then listen to somebody else and then you hear some philosophy over there and you no, you ask God, you wait for his answer. Because when you start jumping on every bandwagon and every opinion that goes down the road, you are all over the place. You're you're swinging from the chandeliers. You have no clue which way you're going. And that's what the Bible means a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. 
You can be bent on righteousness one minute, then somebody else comes along and says, oh, you live by faith, you don't have to live righteous, you can do whatever you want to do. Once saved, always saved, you jump on that bandwagon, and somebody else comes, and they say, oh, you know, the Bible really wasn't written by God, you jump on that bandwagon, and somebody else comes, and next thing you know, you better not call Jesus, Jesus, that's like a cuss word, you better call him uh, Hamashiach, I mean, you just start jumping on all these trends, all these trends, all these fads, religious fads, instead of going to God, who has every answer you need. And when you live your life that way, jumping from one team to the next, from one vehicle to the next, changing horses in the middle of the stream, just jumping everywhere, like a little jumping beam. Well, guess what? It makes you unstable in all your ways. You don't know if you're coming or going. And the Bible says the, the devil is the author of confusion. Don't live your life in a state of confusion. It will get you nowhere. It will <clears throat> do to you what it does to dogs when they run around chasing their tail. They don't go north, they don't go east, they're just going round and round in circles, getting nowhere fast and wearing themselves out while they're at it. <clears throat> All right, picture that as we move on to the next lesson. I'll be back.